Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to build infinite twig farms to fuel factories in Nova Lands from early to end game. So Nova Lands is a factory light where you're tasked with building factories to produce increasingly complex resource pipelines. Twigs are gonna be foundational resources because they're required in most resource trees. So finding simple scalable ways to produce them particularly on islands that don't naturally produce them, is gonna be crucial to avoiding bottlenecks and pipelines and progress throughout the game. So in this post, we'll explore some simple scalable systems for efficiently farming infinite twigs and in Novalands at different stages of the game. Okay, first off, let's start with early game when you first get on the island and how you can get infinite twigs here. So when you start off in the early game, you're just not gonna have many technologies unlocked. You're really just gonna have some bots. Um, you might have some storage. You might have some of these simple furnaces. And so the best thing you're gonna be able to do is really just create a collector bot, um, use them on twig islands and put all your pipelines that require um, twigs, which is mostly gonna be coal based pipelines on there. Now the twigs will infinitely respawn on these twig islands, but there is kind of a cap rate. It's not super fast, but it's fast enough for most of the early game. And also the more buildings you're gonna build on the islands, the less room is gonna be available for the twig spawns. And so this won't scale too far out of mid game, but early game, um, this is more than enough. And so in general, um, one collector bot is gonna be able to fuel about three to six coal furnaces. Um, the amount itself is gonna be highly dependent on how fast the rest of your pipeline is. Obviously, if the rest of your pipeline is super efficient and going very fast, um, then this will probably be on the lower side because the coal is gonna be you know, leaving faster than it can be produced. But oftentimes you're gonna have bottlenecks throughout the pipeline. And so in those cases, it can build up uh, to six. Okay, so as we get into the mid game, we're gonna start unlocking more technologies. And also we're gonna be unlocking more islands that we might wanna build pipelines on that don't natively produce twigs. And so what we're gonna have to do here is probably produce some manual farms to get those twigs on those islands that don't produce them or to get a more consistent rate of twig production. And so to do a manual farm, you're basically gonna need a few things. Um, one, you're gonna need some farm plots for each thing you're producing. In general, I consider like one unit of farming to be about six farm plots. You're gonna put twig bushes on there. You're also gonna need one to two water plants. I like to go for two per six of these to make sure that we have enough water um, for them. And then you're gonna need a collector bot that's going to be a farming all of these farm plots so that it can get the water needed to make these, but also it's gonna be able to get the twigs that you're gonna need throughout your pipeline. And then the final thing you're gonna need is a logistics bot and a seeding machine. The seeding machine is needed so that you can actually keep planting the twigs. Cause you know, if you just kind of cut all the twig things down, there's gonna be nothing left to, to create more twigs. And so the seed machine is gonna produce seeds that'll let you um, do this infinitely. And the logistics bot is needed to actually take the seeds and um, replant them. And so this is a lot more work, but this is gonna unlock a lot more pipelines later for those islands that don't have uh, twigs natively. And even for those islands that do have twigs, this is gonna be a much more consistent production rate for twigs, um, which is gonna be crucial and allow you to expand your buildings even further, covering up more of the land, um, which would cause the natural spawns of those to reduce anyway thus bottlenecking your pipeline and your factory. In general, um, these are gonna be able to, like each unit of these of six is gonna be able to produce or supply three to six advanced coal furnaces. Um, the advanced coal furnaces do have better formulas and so they typically are a little bit faster and produce more. And so it's gonna be able to supply about three to six, again, heavily dependent on um, the actual efficiency of your entire pipeline. One thing I wanna call out is that um, Novalands does gives you the ability to transport resources from island to island. And so theoretically you could do something like produce all resources of one and one area and transport them out. I think in the late game, this is useful sometimes, but in most cases, I find that co-location of resource production is actually more efficient throughout the pipeline than trying to transport these things long distances. I think there's a few reasons for this. One, we don't quite have the technologies that would make this efficient. In particular, drone machines are really the only way to do this super efficiently. And you often don't get this to a little bit later. Two, logistics starts to be your bottleneck um, later in the game. And so each of these times you're moving something somewhere without the drone machine, it takes logistics overload. And so this is actually adding more load onto a bottleneck um, versus like, you know, removing the bottleneck. And the third one is that um, often these raw resources that we're producing, we're gonna be producing them in very high quantities um, versus the, the things that they produce later down the line. 
And so trying to move these things logistically is just a lot less efficient than first turning them into a stage two or a stage three resource um, because those have more inherent value for moving versus a raw resource where you're going to spend a lot of time moving them, but it's not going to be worth much um, in our later pipeline values. And so for these reasons, um, and also just simplicity, I find that co-locating the resource production, um, especially the first few stages together, is, is much more efficient. And that's why I would recommend building these farms even on land that doesn't actually create these naturally. And if we think about software, this is often what we think about more of like vertical slice architecture. Yes, distributed systems can be more efficient and often at very high scale late game, it will be more efficient for certain systems. But generally, trying to start out all systems like this is less efficient because you're doing premature optimization and you're adding a ton of overhead. Like in this case, it's logistics and real world software. It's going to be like network overhead, which for 90% of cases is not a good trade off. Um, and so you want to avoid that as much as possible until you actually find big bottlenecks like that in the entire system. And then you can take those out and kind of optimize for those. So same, same kind of idea here. So by the late game, we're going to need lots of twigs and lots of places. And so doing all those kind of steps that we had earlier for the manual farm, that's actually going to take up a lot of time. Like it's going to be inefficient, but it's also going to take up a lot of space and complexity. We had a lot of different systems going at the same time. And when we just need twigs and it's not the main thing, um, we don't want to spend that complexity on it. And so by the late game, you're going to have unlocked these advanced farms, which looks like this. And this is going to be very important because what it's going to do is it's going to basically allow us, well, I guess when we have twig trees as well, it's going to allow us to farm these things much more efficiently, but we're also not going to need water anymore because twig trees, you just water them once and they grow. And it's going to be faster at producing these things. And we're going to be able to get rid of the collector because the advanced farms collects by itself. What this does is it means that we unlock another one of our bot places on our island, which we can then flip over to be a logistics bot, which is very important because later in the end game, logistics is going to be the bottleneck. It's not going to be resource gathering. And so if we can add more resources to that, the true bottleneck, then we're actually making the entire system much more efficient. And so one of these is just much easier to build. It's much simpler. And this too is going to be able to produce the three to six um, advanced coal furnaces and fully supply them. But also as you go even later into the end game, you're going to be needing more and more resources. And so we're going to need to start getting into packaging, which each package is worth 100 resources. And so the cool thing about this is we can actually just horizontally scale this and have two of these. And this will supply one single twig packager at basically full utilization. And each of those packagers can basically supply about three mega furnaces with that. And so this is how you can make a very solid foundation for your very late game, end game, package-based pipelines. And just to kind of prove that this works, I'll show you some of my factories that are using these um, in the end game. I've already beat the game. I'm working on a few of the kind of later achievements, but just show you kind of how this works in practice. Okay, so the first example I'm going to show you is I'm up here on Metallic Island where I have a titanium factory. And we can see here that, you know, all titanium needs coal, but really it's going to be bottlenecked on these other things, but still I need to make sure that coal is, is constantly made. And so I just have one advanced farm here in the corner that produces or supplies these three advanced coal furnaces. And this is enough to supply my entire island, which you can see is filled up with all the other things. And this is a great example of how using these advanced farms actually allows you to save a bunch of space, but also optimize for the other, other bottlenecks, which here is going to be logistics because I have so many things that need to go from A to B. And you can see my little guys running around everywhere. So this is an example of that one farm supplying kind of a whole pipeline um, and how it's very useful to kind of lower the logistics overhead on um, all of these guys moving stuff around. The next example here is of my twig tree farm supplying two packagers. And basically two of these can fully utilize one single packager. And the reason I made this is because you can see how much logistics overhead there is involved with kind of creating one package of twigs. Each of these is 100 twigs. Twigs are created a lot. And so it takes my logistics bots quite a lot of time to actually supply these things. And so when you get into a place like this, it's often easier to turn it into a tier two or tier three resources before you move them. And that's what I do here. I have two twig packagers. Um, those get sent off here and those come down and supply my um, mega steel factory down here. Now, one thing to note though, is that, you know, this one actually also needs twigs. 
but it needs twigs to actually create packages. And what I found is actually more efficient is to just create a simple one of these to create the, the packages here, um, rather than having all of the twig farms here, because that would require all these logistic spots that are busy doing this stuff um, to focus on the twigs, which just isn't a good use of their time and would actually cause a new bottleneck, a new inefficiency in this farm down here. So Novalands is a fun little factory game. And while it's a factory light, I do think players can learn a lot about simple optimization by playing it. Let me know if you've played Novalands, if you have any questions, suggestions, ways that you've made your factory um, more efficient. I'd love to hear them. Now, if you like this post, you might also like this Zonine vehicle solos Lynels from Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. You might also be interested in Kenshi. This early game automated money farm makes about 4K game per game day. And if you're playing Power Worlds, you might be interested in how to breed pals 400 times faster and avoid hundreds of hours of grinding. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.